Welcome to The Finish Line with So Very Easy. My name is Laura and The Finish Line is all about finishing our quilt tops. And I'd like to share with you one of my favorite patterns to do on my home machine. It's a beautiful stitch, it's very easy to do, and it's a very effective looking stitch because you really can't make any mistakes. The feet dogs stay up, but it will be handy if we have a walking foot. The first thing we need to do is get our quilt ready to be stitched. So I have the back, batting, and front all together. For this quilt, I am using a Hobbs Heirloom Fusible Batting. This is the same 80-20 batting. The difference is, is it is fusible, which means it has a bit of a fuse on both sides. So the back fabric is pressed, the batting goes in between, and we fuse all of these layers together. A no steam hot iron, and we're just going to press the top layer down, turn it over, and repress the back. And once we're done, those layers stay together. And that makes it really easy to go into our home machine. I need to mark a grid line on the quilt top. I will be using a clover charcoal marker. The grid space is really a personal preference, but it is recommended that you have no more than a four inch opening in your grids. For this quilt, I will be doing a four inch grid, but I do want my grid lines on a 45 degree angle. I'm going to start my first grid line from that corner point over four inches. So I have a four inch mark on the ruler and I can bring my second ruler over, take that 45 degree angle and find a straight edge. And in this case, I'm going to use that first border line. You can also use the edge. Once I have my first four inch, I can put that away. This little chalk marker will run right along the edge of the ruler. So you can see that chalk line. For marking the rest of the quilt, I'm going to use the very last line that I mark. So with this line, I'm going to find the four inch mark on my ruler, and I can see that line right through the ruler, and run that very end right up against that ruler. So now I have my two four inch marks. I'm going to take that last four inch mark, match the chalk line up with my four inch mark, and draw my next line. I'm going to continue using that last line, my four inch mark, and I'm going to mark the entire quilt going in one direction. Once the grid lines are going in the one direction, I'm going to start the grid lines in the second direction, finding that 45 degree angle and start marking. This chalk marker makes a nice fine line and it's easy to run along the ruler. And I'm going to continue doing that second grid. So I now have these big four inch squares or a four inch grid mark. This fusible batting really stays well under the machine. However, I do like to put just a couple of pins in the corners just to prevent it from rolling. I would recommend quilting pins. However, my girlfriend's borrowing my quilting pins, so I'll have to make do with these big ones. But I need one pin in each corner. Because my grid lines are on a 45 degree angle, I'm going to roll my quilt in that angle. I do want to start and quilt my center lines first and then go to one side and then go to the other. Then I'm going to re-roll it and go from the other side. So to start with, I'm just going to roll this up until I get to one area. And I like to use big clothes pins just to hold that in place. I can now roll the second end and clip it with these big clothes pins. Now all I have to concentrate on are those two rows down the center and then I'm going to work as I go. I was choosing between two different threads. The black thread you don't see at all on the black area, but you would see it in the red area. The red thread, of course, you're going to see it in the black, but not in the red area. But because I'm trying to imitate this plaid, 
I do want to see my stitching. And since more of the background is black, I'm going to choose the red because I want to see the stitching. So the thread that I've chosen for this project is a small spool of glide thread. The glide thread is from Filtech. It's 100% polyester, so it doesn't leave any lint in the machine, and it has this beautiful shine on it. I'll be putting this in the bobbin, and I'll be using this in the top. You can use either a 7511 or a 9014 quilting needle. And if you have a walking foot, will be really handy because we are going to leave the feed dogs up. My Bernina 790 comes with three stitches that look very similar. Numbers 1396, 1397, and 1398. They all have this gentle curve. 1396 has the smallest stitch length. The other two, the curves are very similar. The stitch lengths are different. Any of these curved stitches are going to work really well. When we stitch, we're going to have a line that we're going to follow, but the machine does this curve. So we do not need to move the fabric. The needle is going to move in that curved shape, and that goes for all of those stitches. Most machines do have this gentle curved shape. Yours will just be a different number. So I have my needle on, my thread on, my walking foot, and I'm using 1396. We need to follow the marked center line for our foot, regardless if it's a walking foot or a regular foot. We want the center of that foot to run along that line. I've started on the outside, and as I stitch, I'm just gonna make sure that this stays down and doesn't get rolled up. You can use a stiletto or a pin. From here, that rest of the line is going to be very easy to follow. The chalk line needs to go in the center of the foot. The feed dogs and the walking foot are going to do all of the work. I just need to guide the fabric to the position that I want. As you're stitching, you're going to notice the needle making this curve. The foot stays straight, but that needle moves to make the shape. So we just need to follow the line. And it gives us that curve. So we just need to continue stitching the line. And when we come to the end, we're going to stitch right off. For the second line, I'm going to start off of the quilt, make sure that it doesn't get tucked over, and continue stitching following the line. And stitch right off the end. With the two rows of stitching done, I'm going to unclamp and expose one or two of my rows. And I reclamp them with my handy clothesline clips. If you'd like, you can roll this and reclamp it so it stays out of your way. Now my next chalk line is ready to go. This curved line does not follow that chalk line, which means you will never notice if you've come off of the chalk line on one way or another. The curves will hide any of those mistakes. Continue reclamping and stitch all of the lines going in one direction and then in the other direction. We have big squares and lots of squiggly lines. And the back looks great too. This four inch grid is really the maximum space that you should leave. We could go in and make this a two inch grid. We can go in with the ruler and the chalk, make more lines, and do more rows of quilting. You could do those second rows in another color. I've used the red apple color for one stitching. For the next line, I'm going to use the black. And that way, 
it really does duplicate this a little bit better. It's very hard for the camera to pick up this black stitching because it really does blend in. But in the back, you can definitely see how cute it looks. All of the stitching in the front is now done. I do like to do one additional thing. I do like to do a row of stitching all the way around the outside. By doing this extra row of stitching, it helps anchor these threads so that when we trim it off and put the binding on, the threads stay better. So it is important that we stay within that quarter inch seam allowance and change your stitch length to be a little bit smaller, like a two. So stitch with a small two inch straight stitch all the way around. By using the two different color threads, not only did it duplicate the pattern on the side, it didn't give me too much red or too much black. And at the same time, it gave it a wonderful texture. This stitch can be used on many different quilts. With this particular quilt, it did give it more of an outdoorsy look. But in a soft white, it gives it a very pretty, delicate look. And I didn't have to try to match up any of the seams. I was just able to stitch along the line. I was able to mark this quilt and get the quilting done all in an afternoon. It is quick and easy because we're not matching up any lines. We're just letting the machine follow that chalk line. And the chalk is almost already gone because it does just brush off. If you do have some chalk left over, a dry cloth and rub it and the chalk is going to disappear. And it does wash out totally in the wash. That little zigzag stitch really is a lot of fun. I'll put a link in the description to some of the items that I use so you can check them out. And thank you for joining me today on So Very Easy. Feel free to subscribe and as always, come on back. Let's see what we're stitching next time in the sewing room. Bye for now.